friends and visitors to this land of Thamma. Certainly you are all curious to know as to what is being taught in this meditation center. Not only in this meditation center, but in all the Vipassana meditation centers in the country and abroad, no religious dogma is being taught. Only a way of life is taught. How to live peacefully, how to live harmoniously within, and how to generate nothing but peace and harmony for others. An art of living. which has nothing to do with any organized religion, nothing to do with any blind belief or dogma, rites or rituals. A way of life, a good way of life. Therefore, people would join the course of ten days of Vipassana, they have to take a vow that they will observe five precepts and the precepts are that I will abstain from killing, I will abstain from stealing, I will abstain from sexual misconduct, I will abstain from speaking lies, I will abstain from taking any kind of intoxicants. A moral way of life, good for everyone, accepted by every religion, preached by every religion and yet very difficult to observe. And the main reason why it is difficult to observe is that one has no control over one's mind. A drunkard knows very well that I should not drink. A gambler knows very well that I should not gamble. Similarly, anyone indulged in any kind of misconduct knows very well, this is not good for me. I should not do it. And yet, one cannot abstain from doing that because one has no control over the mind. Therefore, after taking these five precepts, the first thing that is taught is how to develop mastery over one's own mind. To develop mastery over the mind, one has to train the mind to get concentrated on one object or the other. And the object that is given here is universal because the whole path is universal. It is not sectarian. It has nothing to do with any organized religion. Therefore, the object of concentration of the mind is also universal. It is not sectarian. The student is asked to develop the concentration of the mind by observing one's own respiration pure respiration, bare respiration, natural respiration, as it comes in, as it goes out. Just keep on observing it. Do nothing. Never try to regulate the breath. Let the nature play its own role. If the breath is deep, you are just aware it is deep. If it is shallow, you are just aware it is shallow. If it is passing through left nostril, you are aware it is passing through the left nostril. If it is passing through the right nostril, you are just aware it is passing through the right nostril. That's all. Just remain aware. Awareness. Awareness of your own respiration 
as it comes in, as it goes out naturally. Now the object is such which is acceptable to one and all. A Hindu can practice with this object, a Muslim can practice with this object, a Buddhist, a Jain, a Christian, a Jew, makes no difference, anyone. Because the breath is universal. We don't ask people to use certain words, a name of this god or that goddess. We don't want people to imagine the shape or the form of this god or that goddess, then it will become sectarian. But just observing the breath as it is, as it comes in, as it goes out, it makes the object universal. One trains the mind to get concentrated. That means one, one develops the mastery over one's own mind. But this alone is not sufficient. One may be master of one's own mind and yet may be involved in unwholesome actions, physical as well as oral, and may harm others. The next step, and very important step, is to get the mind purified. If the mind is purified, and one has control over the purified mind, then there is no danger of misusing it. A purified mind cannot harm anybody. And the next step to purify the mind is again non-sectarian, it is universal. One is asked to observe one's own mind. One is asked to observe the biochemical reactions in the body because of the mind and mental contents. Say for example, an impurity arises in the mind and anger as a reason or hatred as a reason or ill will, animosity. What starts happening in the body? There is some unpleasant sensation on the body. One is asked to observe that sensation. There might be heat in the whole body. The palpitation might increase. Tension might get built up. Do nothing, just observe it. Just accept the fact that there is anger which has arisen in my mind at this moment and look, there is heat in my body or the palpitation has increased or there is tension, whatever it is. Just observe that and accept the fact that my mind is at present full of this particular negativity. And you will find that you are coming out of it. You have not suppressed it. You have not given it a free license. And then something wrong at the vocal and physical level. You have just observed it. Observing, observing, observing. Layers after layers of this impurity get peeled off and one comes out of it. Not only that, if one continues to practice like this, one comes out of a particular habit pattern of which one has become a slave. Everyone has become a slave of one's own habit pattern, behavior pattern. Whenever one experiences something pleasant, the behavior pattern has become to react with craving, with clinging. Similarly, whenever one faces something unpleasant, the behavior pattern has become to react with anger, with aversion, with hatred. And in both the cases, one becomes very agitated, very irritated. By this practice, one slowly breaks this behavior pattern and starts coming out of it. Whenever one generates negativity, one becomes very agitated, very miserable. One may call oneself a Hindu or a Muslim or a Jain or a Christian or a Jewish. It makes no difference. A human being is a human being. As soon as you generate any negativity in the mind, you are bound to become miserable. And when you become miserable with the negativity, you never keep this misery limited to yourself. 
you start throwing this misery all around you. You start distributing this misery to others. You make everyone else miserable. You make the entire atmosphere around you so tense. Anyone who comes in contact with you at that time becomes miserable, unhappy. Certainly, this is not a way of life. This is not a good way of life. This technique teaches you how to live a good way of life, how to live peacefully, how to live harmoniously, how to generate nothing but peace and harmony within oneself for oneself, and how to generate nothing but peace and harmony for others, so that people who come in contact, they also feel very peaceful, very harmonious. The five precepts that one takes in the beginning one understands at the intellectual level that they are so good. Human being is a social being, one has to live in the society. One should not do anything at the physical or vocal level which will disturb the peace and harmony of others, which will harm and hurt others. Therefore, these precepts are very essential. But as one proceeds on this path, it becomes so clear that the sages and saints of the past advised us to live the life of morality because it is not only for the good of others but also for our own good. The meditator starts realizing that whenever I perform any unwholesome action at the vocal level or at the physical level, I can't perform it unless I generate some negativity or the other some impurity or the other in my own mind. If I have to kill somebody, I must generate tremendous amount of anger, hatred, ill will, and then only I can kill somebody. Similarly, for every vice, every unwholesome action of the body or the speech, one has to generate some defilement, some impurity in the mind. And it becomes so clear to a meditator of Vipassana because Vipassana is nothing to, but to observe the reality, the truth within oneself from moment to moment. Observing this truth from moment to moment, one starts realizing that whenever I have generated any negativity in my mind, I have become very miserable, very miserable. So whenever I try to harm others at the physical level or vocal level, I can't harm anybody unless I have first harmed myself. Because I have to generate negativity in my mind to harm others. And when I start gen negativity in my mind, I become miserable. So I have been generating misery for myself. Now it becomes so clear that when I observe these five precepts, I am not obliging anybody. I am obliging myself. I am doing all this for my own good. Real self-interest will become so clear. In my own good, I should not perform any action at the physical level or vocal level which will disturb others. Because as soon as I get involved in anything like this, I start harming myself by generating a negativity and becoming miserable. As one develops in this technique, it becomes so easy to live the life, a good life, a life of morality, because one starts understanding at the actual level, at the experiential level, that living good life is not only for the good of others, but for my good also. More for my good. It will become so clear. The entire path, the five precepts, controlling the mind with the aid of the breath, natural breath, purifying the mind by observing the body sensations, by observing the mental contents, is universal. Anybody can do this. That is the reason why, not only in this center, but in all the centers around the world, people from different communities, different countries, belonging to different religious groups, they come, meditate, and get the same advantage. No conversion is involved. One does not come here to get converted from one organized religion to another organized religion. 
this technique has nothing to do to convert people in a particular organized religion because this technique is not bound by any particular organized religion it is universal although taught by gautama the buddha but his teaching was universal he was not interested in con- converting people in any particular sect he was not interested to establish a sect suffering humanity if they get this wonderful technique they will come out of their misery and in the same tradition people are given this technique so that they come out of their misery a hindu may continue to call himself a hindu for the whole life a muslim a muslim a christian a christian a jain a jain a buddhist a buddhist makes no difference one becomes a good human being and the technique the dhamma the universal dhamma is to make you a good human being if one is not a good human being how can one be a good hindu or a good muslim or a good christian or a good buddhist or a good jain good human being therefore no conversion as such is involved although conversion is involved the conversion is that you will get converted from misery to happiness you will get converted from bondage to liberation you will get converted from ignorance to enlightenment take advantage of this technique may all of you find time to give a trial to this technique for your own good and for the good of many for the benefit of many may you all take advantage of this technique and come out of your misery to enjoy real peace real harmony real happiness may all of you enjoy real peace real harmony real happiness real happiness